please at this time open up the 5-5 worksheet that you see here. Please scribble out your uh, the original functions given to you uh, for 3 and 4 and uh, write down the functions that you see there. Let's start with problem number one. Now, I am going to do one and three with you in class in this video. It is your responsibility when the video is over to finish the other two problems yourself to get full credit. Um, and then you can use the rest of your time to uh, get caught up in any of the mod five homeworks or anything you're missing because we do have a test coming up. So in problem number one, we want to find the zeros, the y-intercept, the lead term it ends, and the graph. First, let's find the zeros. You are going to set each of the uh, factors you see up above equal to zero, and you are going to solve. Now, this one here has about because of the power of two that we see. This one here has a bounce because again of the power of two that we see there. So let's put those uh, x-intercepts, those zeros on our graph. So negative five and positive five and negative two. The next thing we need to find is the y-intercept. If you plug in zero, you do get a very large number. You get 1,250. So uh, let's just scribble out this eight here. Let's put that that's the number 1,250. I, I don't really mind or care about that at this time. Just put your dot there. Okay. What are the ends doing? Well, if we take out all of the x's, that we see in their powers. The front quantity x minus 5 squared gives us an x squared. The, the second factor gives us an x, and the third factor gives us an x squared for a total of x to the fifth. Since that's odd and a positive coefficient, the right end goes up and the left end goes down. If there happened to be a coefficient sitting here, we would have to include it because it would affect what the lead term is doing. So let's write that more formally. As the x goes to negative infinity, the y is going down to negative infinity. That just says, as we go to the left, we're going down. As we go to the right, our y's are going up. So this just says, x goes to positive infinity, the y's are going to positive infinity. As we go to the right, we are going up. Let's put those ends on. The right's going up. The left's going down. Now uh, we're ready to graph. So remember, we have a bounce at positive 5 and negative 5. So here we're going to bounce. Come back through negative 2 up to that little, I don't know if we're higher than that, don't care, and then bounce through that point. So that is problem number 1. You're going to need to do problem number two before you turn this in. Um, similar idea of how we did problem number one. Now, uh, remember, three and four, you should have rewritten to reflect the new functions that I have written in. We're going to do three together. It is your job to do four. Now, when I see a polynomial in unfactored form, um, I need to get it in factor form. You will notice in part A for both of these, I have mentioned the word factor. The factorization is going to help us find the zeros. So with this one, I want to see if maybe 1 or negative 1 is a 0. For this one, I might try 1, negative 1, 2, negative 2 until I find a 0. Now, if you plug in 1 to this one, we do indeed get 0. So that means that we can remove x minus 1 as a factor. 
Now we remove it by division. Now, if you like synthetic division, like I'm gonna do here, feel free to do synthetic division. If you don't like synthetic division, do long division. So I've made my synthetic division box. Uh, let's go. We're gonna multiply, write it down, add them up, multiply, write it down, add them up, multiply, write it down, add them up. We should get a zero in this spot based upon the fact that we plugged in one and got zero. Okay, so now this new function is hopefully a, quanti a quantity that is uh, factorable, a quadratic that's factorable. It is, that is x plus one times x plus one, or we happen to have a perfect square. So our original function in factored form is x minus one, that's the first factor we found, and we have two x plus ones. So the zeros are at one and at negative one, but this one, don't forget, is a bounce. Now the y-intercept is nice. You could plug it into the factored form or the original. They should get you the same values either way. Uh, if you plug in zero to either of those forms, you do get negative one. So we have another point we can put on the graph. The lead term for an unfactored form is ready to go, x cubed. But if you pulled out the x's and the powers from each of this, you get x times x squared, which is x cubed. You get x cubed up there, however you want to do it. But our lead term is x cubed. So as x goes to the left, y is going to go down. As x goes to the right, y is going to go up. So it looks like a normal unflipped cubic. Now let's put our zeros on. We had one at positive one and negative one. We hit the y-axis at negative one. Our left end goes down, our right end goes up. Remember, we only have a bounce at negative one. So bounce and then go through. Bounce, you should see that little parabola-like shape right at that uh, spot. And then we go through that one. So your job now is to please finish this up. Once problems one through four are finished up, by the end of class, turn this in, and then please open up your iMath and take a look at any of the Mod 5 homeworks, anything at all, uh, any of the mods or notes you haven't taken yet. Please take the rest of the period to get yourself caught up.